Hello brothers and sisters, Brother Trey here again. Haven't made a video for probably over a week now. I just really haven't been led of the Lord to do so. Um, nothing really stuck out in my scripture and uh, the Lord really didn't lead me to do that as far as I know. Um, you know, because, you know, I can, people can ignore um, the sm still small voice of the Lord um, and his uh, leading, but um, uh, this one I I believe he uh, had was having me was telling me this morning, but then um, also I think it should be addressed with the body of Christ as well. Um, and I posted some of it this morning out of Deuteronomy chapter eight, and it said and uh, I it started at seven, verses seventeen um, and eighteen only, but uh, really I should really go back and really let's see like this is what God is saying says. Um, he's speaking to me as well, but also others as well who are going to be listening to this. Um, Beware that thou forget not the word, not, not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee to this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and when thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is all you have is multiplied. Then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through thy great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water. Who brought who brought thee before brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint? Who let fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do thee good at the latter end? And thou say in thy heart, My power and my might thou say in thy heart. My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with thee, his covenant which he swore unto your fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before your face, so shall ye perish, because you should would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Now, I had, I had you know, people always, always, I've, or a lot at least, that they, they focus on chapter 8 or verse 18 it says and thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that gives the power to get wealth saying oh okay, yeah he gives us power to get wealth power, or, or, um, abilities skills talents to get wealth but um they don't really go into context they say oh that he's our source of course but then um no, he's he's uh he's saying beware Forget not the Lord. Beware, and not keep, be, 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 beware that thou not forget not the Lord. And we're keeping His commandments, or judgments, His statutes, and command. And I command thee, and He's given a commandment this day to not forget the Lord. Don't forget who gives you the good things. Don't forget where He, who where He has blessed you. Don't forget that He brought you through the wilderness in the tar times don't forget that um he brought he brought you through the terrible wilderness where there were serpents and scorpions and drought there was no water this is where there was no water who brought you water out who brought you water out of the rock of flint who brought water who brought food who gave who gave us manna who fed us in the wilderness and in the, in the tough times why did he why did he bring us through that he's speaking to me as well i'm telling you that why he said he asked who he's asking me he's asking you 
Who fed you in the wilderness? Who fed you during the tough times? Who, who fed you not only physical food, but who fed you his word? Who gave you his word for tough times in the wilderness, in times of drought, when there's no food, no water, when there's a drought and the word of God, the voice of the prophets, the prophetic voice, when there's a drought, when the word of God is not being preached, the word of God is not being lived out. Who fed you? Who gave you hope in those times? Who is Jesus is the bread of life? He is our manna. Who gave you manna? Who gave you Jesus? Who, who gave you life-giving water? Jesus is the well of life. Who gave you living water? He, he gave us living. He spoke to the woman. Uh, that was a Samarian woman, I think, at the well. He, who, he gives us water that we should never thirst. Who gave us this water? He is the rock. They struck him, but he flowed out to us. He delivers us. So who, what, he gave it to us in this time of, time of trouble, in times of bad times, in times of lack. We need to remember the Lord, where he brought us through, who provided for us in those times, not ourselves, not of our own hands. He says that. He says, why, why did he, well, in six, verse 16, he says, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna? Who, why, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee. Why, this is saying why he did it. To humble us. To keep us humble. To go to the tough times. That we, he might prove us, test us, test our faith, test our loyalty to him. Why does he do that? He's doing that to me. He's been doing that to me. I can guarantee it. Since he, God told me that he was going to prove me, that he was going to test me. But then he, he does that to others also, not just me. He's why did, He also does it to do you good, do the good at thy latter end. So he proves us, he humbles us, tests us to do us good at our latter end, to our, our uh, final days. Now he proves us, he gives us, gives us manna, gives us manna in our wilderness, and as we travel this earth, gives us manna. He gives us Jesus. He gives us the bread of life. He gives us life-giving water. He gives us Jesus. He gives us manna. He gives us the Holy Spirit that we humble us, prove us to do us good to our latter end until the end of days, till the end of our life. He gives us Jesus. He gives us Holy Spirit. And he doesn't want us to be prideful and saying by our own power, our own might, or our of uh, my own hand, have I got us wealth? You know, he doesn't want us to be prideful. He doesn't want us to re forget him, that he did this for us, not just us. We maybe planted the seed, and but he helped us reap that harvest. We can't, we can't control how much fruit we get off of one seed. God does that. We plant the seed, God does the rest. We plant, we may plant, we may water, we may take care of the ground, but God does the rest. Amen? So he, we do the work, but he brings us the increase. Um, so that we say in our heart, my power and the might of my hand that have got me, but I think it's Zechariah or something that says, not by, or he, it's a prophecy to Zerubbabel, who's a governor who helps to re, helps to rebuild the temple? Um, he says the prophecy um, Ezra or uh, um, one of those or Amos or something like that. I can't remember who exactly who said it, but it says, "Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord shall uh, um, shall do do these things." So not wasn't by their own might, they're not by their own power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. 
was they were able to do these things. He was leading them. He was, you know, and God was in control in these times. So by His Spirit, uh, they were able to gate to get wealth in these times. People, He stirred up the spirits of the people to give unto the Israelites. He stirred up the people to give unto Abraham, to give unto Isaac, to give unto Jacob. He gave favor to the servant of um he gave um favor to um Isaac's to uh Abraham's servant to find a wife for uh, for Isaac he gave favor so those connected have favor to you give favor so um but not by might not by power but by the spirit of the Lord that the Lord has blessed us not by our own might, not by our power. It gives us abilities, gifts, talents um, to do these things. It's, you know, we can't do anything of our own. With God, all things are possible. It, uh, I can do th all things through Christ Jesus. So through God, all things are possible. Through Jesus, we can do um, we can do all things through the Spirit of the Lord, power of His might. Um, and uh, it says, number, verse 18 says, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power. So he gives us the power, the ability, the talents, the gifts to get wealth. So he, I mean, not only not of our own, but people give. If, you, if you're if you under the anointing, the ability, the authority of God, you're following God, you're God's chosen one, if you're, obedient to God, you know, he blessed Abraham, this is the Abrahamic blessing, uh, I bless you to to bless others, to to be great, to make your name great, to be, to, to be, um, to bless the nations, so God blesses us, others gave to Abraham, because he was obedient, but God, or Abraham gave unto Melchizedek, the king of Salem or something, the high priest he gave his tithes. Um, but, oh, Abraham was blessed to bless others. Um, so, but Abraham never forgot God. He never forgot where the promise, the promise came from. He was waiting for the promise most of his life, but he never forgot the promise. He never forgot where his where his blessing came from. Because he was in relationship with us he was god they said the scripture says that abraham was god's friend so he never forgot him he was uh, in close intimate walk with god he said uh, god gives us power to get wealth give us the ability to get wealth how we get that how we get that wealth I mean, it could be through our own talents, through our own gifts that God gives us, um, because He gives gifts unto men, or it could, you know, the power, the ability to get wealth, or, you know, could receive it. He could stir up the hearts of others, like I said, because that's one thing He was telling me in another one of my videos. He, in, through Scripture, he, that was talking about um, people, Israelite people, bringing. An offering uh, their skills, their uh, the works of their hands, and bringing it to the, bringing it to the, um, bringing it to the, the tabernacle, to bring in the gold, the silver, uh, like the stuff, the bringing the cattle for the sacrifice, bringing uh, or bringing the animals for the sacrifice, bringing silver and gold, bringing um, all kinds of things. Their 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 skills, their craft, their craftsmanship. That they've been t God the, has um, given them because you know He's given gives skills to people. He, it says it for the work of the ministry. So He's going to bring the people. He's going to bring He's going to bring the people. He's going to bring silver and gold or the, the finances and the the gifts, um, the things that are needed for the work of the ministry. And but we have to um, He. And he does it. He gives us power. He gives us wealth. He gives us power to get wealth so they may establish the covenant 
which he swore unto his fathers as it is it in this day. So the covenant, the second covenant, was through Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ who gave us a covenant, which he swore unto his father. So Jesus is that second covenant. So we all may come through salvation through Christ and through faith in Christ Jesus. So that's our second covenant. So he gives us power to get wealth. So where do where do we get power in the New Testament in the New Covenant? Where do we get power from? In the new in the new the new covenant. What is Jesus and Jesus says you get covenant a uh, new covenant in my blood, and this which is we state as we institute the sacrament of communion. So he says that we get we we have a new covenant through his blood through his blood in the sacrament of holy communion but now where does we where does he say we get power now we go to the book of acts the book of acts i think it's chapter three if i'm not two or three was, I think it's in chapter one. I'm not sure. Okay, so, um, let's see. It says in verse in Acts chapter one. Verse 8 says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses in both to me in Jude Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to all the other part, outer, uh, uttermost parts of the earth. So we receive power through the Holy Ghost. Power, and we are given an authority through the Holy Ghost. So, we, so he gives us power, gives us the Holy Ghost. Gives us an uh, authority, give us um, the anointing, gives us uh, gifts, abilities through the Holy Ghost so that we may get wealth. But, you know, it's not for our own. It's for, um, we, so we may establish a covenant which he swore to the fathers as he did this day. So it's for the covenant for Jesus. It's for the work of Jesus' ministry. So that we, people might may be into that covenant. So we receive Christ to be into that covenant. So uh, if it, it shall be if you do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them I testify you this day that you shall surely perish. So if you forget God, if you turn away from God, now listen up, United States and the world, not just the United States, but you no, know, I live in the United States. We know we're we're turning away from God with this LGBTQ, the alphabet community, whatever you want to call it. The abomination of God um, movement. Abomination. Not, God's not in it, but the God of this world, which is the devil's movement. Um, if you will forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods, so other gods, you know, most of the time it's fallen angels or so, that are, people are worshiping as other gods, Nephilim, giants, whatever. You forget God. You, and you know, um, one of the gods was Ashtoreth. You know, if you, the Return of the Gods by Jonathan Kahn, it's a book. I read it. One of the one of the gods was Ashtoreth or Ishtar, which was worshipped. She was the god the the a harlot goddess. She was goddess of basically immorality, of homosexuality, of pride. She had pride parades. Read the book if you don't believe me. Um, Mary to Baal. Um, anything Baal is a god over, over against everything that's against God, and you have 
uh, the goddess of immorality, witchcraft, immorality, sexual, in, um, sexual immorality, uh, homosexuality, uh, and uh, she was one of the gods that was worshipped. So was Baal. You can know that's biblical too. And Ashtoreth was mentioned. As you walk after other gods, you serve them and worship them, and I testify against you to say that you shall surely perish. So if we, um, if we forget God and we go after other gods, we walk after gods and we walk the opposite direction of God and go against God, then we shall surely perish. So we're sinning against God, and the wages of sin is death. So if we don't, if we forget God and follow after other gods. Gods of this world, you know, without knowing it, uh, Lord forgive them whether they don't know what they do because they are just in sin. They're not on what spirit they are of. Um, these homosexual community, uh, these confusion. God is not the God of confusion, so God has no part in this um, multiple genders thing. So God is not like a God of confusion. He created male and female in His image. So, uh, and he said, you shall perish. So this nation needs to turn. We need to remember, this nation needs to remember where our wealth came from, where our prosperity came from. We know the United States of America, it has been prosperous. There's no doubt about it. We People come to this nation for new opportunities, for chances to have the power to get wealth. In this nation, we've been given the power to get wealth by God, not of our own hands. We didn't do this by ourselves. God did this in our nation. God gave us the power to get wealth, the abilities. You know, it might come in the form of capitalism, but, it, you know, that can be abused clearly. We have the wealth you don't care about anybody else but themselves. They've been given the power. And I brought and I charged the wealthy in another video. Be ready to be ready to communicate, to um, trust in the Lord, to remember. Out of, this is out of the book of Timothy, one of the Timothys. I can't remember exactly which one, but it said, "Remember, be ready to communicate, be ready to distribute your wealth." So, given the power to get wealth, but why does it give us the power to get wealth for the covenant, for the work of the ministry, the covenant which we, a new covenant which we have in Jesus Christ? That, um, you know, be ready to distribute, to set a good foundation for things to come, or do good works for, that's a foundation of good works for things to come. And Jesus is coming. Our foundation, the foundation of our faith is coming again. The chief cornerstone is coming again. Is he going to need to reestablish his church? To rebuild it? Probably because we've torn it down. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. All the things he set up, all his, um, all the foundations that he has laid, and we've had the foundations that we've had in the church. And I recently just took a class. In this class, I, I I'm talking. I was did this past week. It says laying the foundation. It's called laying the foundation. What are the, it talks about six foundation stones, which is repentance from dead works, where faith towards God, the doctrines of baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. Now, I know a lot of you don't want that last one. Repentance from dead works, repentance from sin, faith towards God, faith in Jesus Christ. The doctrine of baptism, you must be, I mean, baptism doesn't save you, but it's required. The laying on of hands. It's a norm in the church. The impartation, the acknowledging of leadership, the deliverance can happen, happen through the laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead. That can happen through the laying on of hands. Because that was one of the commandments to raise the dead in Christ Jesus and the eternal judgment. And if we don't do any of the first five, well, if we don't do repentance from dead works or faith towards God, we, know we need baptisms. Baptism in the water, baptism in the Holy Ghost. The resurrection of the dead. And the baptism of kindness is the resurrection of the dead. It's a symbolism 
arising from the dead into a new life. But then, in a way, if we don't have all first five, then we're not going to, we got to deal with the last one. We don't have, repent from dead works, and then if we don't have, and then faith towards God, faith in Jesus Christ, then we are going to see eternal judgment. So we went away from our foundations. We talk about the the uh, the um, Constitution as our foundation. Christ is our foundation. Those six foundation stones that I, that I mentioned from my, the class I took: repentance from dead works, faith towards God, the doctrines of baptism, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. Those are six foundation stones that. If you want to put that in a constitution, that would be that would be a thing to have. Is the foundation stones of God? Well, first Christ as the first, as the foundation, the chief cornerstone, chief foundation stone, built on the doctrine uh, upon the uh, word, uh, um, doctrines or whatever the apostles and prophets, which the church is built on the foundations of. We get back to the foundation stones. We need to remember where we came from. We need to remember our get back to the foundation and we need to rebuild we need to restore God needs to restore his church um, so if we forget God and we serve other gods in which we clearly have many things many things are our God anymore anything that keeps us from worshipping God uh, sports uh, things that we would take precedence over God Money. Uh, we should we should uh, serve. We should need to choose between whether we serve God or Mammon, which Mammon is normally the, is greed or the love of money. We serve money more than we do, more we more than we serve God. Um, are we serving God or are we serving Mammon when we're in the ministry? Definitely not. That for me, I'm trying to serve God. Um. And then, as a nation which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall you perish, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord. Now, I don't claim that over the United States. I say repent now. That first foundation stone. That first foundation stone that I mentioned. Repentance from dead works. From dead works. Repent from sin. Repent from things that are not of God. Repent from dead works. And so what I'm asking you, have faith towards God was the second foundation stone. We turn to those foundations. Cry, repentance from dead works. Stop what you're doing. Stop following after other gods. Stop following after athletes, after celebrities, after following after athletes, celebrities, singers, actresses, actors, um, athletes, like I said. Really, the work they're doing is dead works. They're a place of influence, but why? Like, there's media, there's uh, entertainment, there's government, there's um, family, uh, whatever other seven mountains there are, but there are wrong people in leadership. They're leading this nation to dead works. So repent, America, repent the world from dead works. Turn away, away from the ways of the world, but on the ways of God. We return to our foundations. Repent from dead works and have faith towards God. Stop putting everything else before God. Our own wants, our own needs, our own heart's desires, the less of the flesh. Stop it. And remember, we need to remember God. Bring this nation back to God. Bring God back into remembrance to this nation. So God will bring this nation back into remembrance. Second Chronicles 7. I said it before. I'm pretty sure it's one of the other videos. 7. 14, I think it is. Second Chronicles 14. Second Chronicles 14. Uh, 7. 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. 
So he's bringing us through all this to humble us again through these trying times to make us remember God. You know, the economy's tanking. You know that. The the uh, economy's tanking. The housing market's, I think, tanking. Uh, I think the stocks aren't doing so well. Prices of, every, of food and resources is going up. The economy's not doing so well. He's bringing us through this wilderness, this trying time, to humble us. So he might prove us, test us, see where we're at in, in our hearts. See, when we turn back to God, where are we at? We, are, we know where God is. God's always been in the same spot. Where have our hearts been? My question is, where is your heart right now? Where is your heart right now? Do you remember God? Is God on your mind? Or is it everything that you, is just on the things that you worship and you want? Where is your heart? Are you following after the lust of the flesh? After the things of the flesh? The things of this world? Or are you separated from it? You need to decide that. Are you, who, what? Decide this day on whom you will serve. Either we follow after God or the gods of this world. Which is Satan and the fallen angels. Um, we need to not forget God anymore. We need to bring him into remembrance and to bring this nation. So again, I'm going to go back to Chronicles 14. 714, which I got away from. My my apologies. Um, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, which we need to pray. We pray back into this nation, which with Donald Trump, I'm not, I don't care if you like him or not, Donald Trump was bringing prayer to this nation. I mean, there were several conferences, uh, concerts, whatever, where there was prayer. Prayer, and then there was prayer in the capital, where prayer should be. In a relationship with God, and people, people are praying over the president, whether you like them or not. I don't care what side of the fence you are on. Uh, we should be praying for our leaders. Uh, pray and seek my face. So we got to seek God's face. We got to seek God's will for this nation. This nation has a destiny and a purpose. It's why we were established. So He's bringing us through the wilderness again to prove us. To prove us. And he wants to do us get good at our latter end. You know, Jesus is coming. There is a latter end coming to the United States of America. The world will not be the same. Christians and the Holy Spirit are that those that are standing in the way of the enemy's devices. We're standing in the gap. We're standing in the way. Holy Spirit is holding back the evil. If you don't see that there's evil in this world, then you're blind. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see the truth. Now, I'm asking you, remember the Lord. Because what did this last, the verse 20 of Deuteronomy say? It says, as the nations which the Lord destroyed, the Lord destroyed nations, for Israel's sake, for his for his purposes and glory. He said, that if you forget God, so will you, just like those nations who were destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish, because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. So if you are saying God is your God, the Lord is your God, and you're not being obedient to his voice, Then, or obedient to his word spoken or written doesn't matter you're not being obedient this nation does not turn and not humble themselves like I said uh, I think I need to continue with that uh, 14 turn seek your, his face seek God seek his will for this nation um, and turn from your wicked way so this is what we need to do Forget, remember God Pray, humble yourselves, knowing that we've done wrong. Repent, pray, 
seek God's face, seek God's will. Turn from your wicked ways. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop the wickedness in this nation. Then I will hear from heaven. So he's going to hear our prayers. If we will stop what we're doing, we will humble ourselves, you know, in humility. Pray. pray talk to God. Seek his face. Seek his will. Seek what he wants. Turn from our wicked ways. So go back to holiness and righteousness. Seeking so being transformed by the renewing mind through the word of God. Turn from our wicked ways. Know which way to go, which is righteously. Be on the right way through the word of God, through God's voice. You need to listen to God's voice through the word or through spoken word, which is whatever is preached, which that needs to be filtered too. Whatever is preached needs to be along with the uh, Go with the word of God. Okay, and then uh, turn from your wicked ways. He says, I will hear from heaven, says he's going to hear us. So he can hear our prayers. He will hear our prayers. And will forgive their sin, the sins of this nation, or individually, sins of our nation or individually. Forgive the sin. Forgive your sins. Jesus did that. He forgave your sins. That's that new covenant. That's that covenant I was talking about. So you will have a covenant. So he's going to humble you to prove this, humble this nation, the economy, whatever it takes to humble us. You want to understand? We are so prideful in this nation. We have like a spirit of pride that's hovering over this nation. Yeah, we can love our nation, but we can't be so prideful that it's impenetrable. It's, you know, it's not, it's, Nothing can harm it. It's not like we don't have God. We don't have protection. We're, we forget God, and God forgets us, and then we remove His protection. Isn't it nine eleven said something about that? We've had China and Russia in our waters, over our airspace, whether the people know it or not. I'm telling you that right now. We've had clearly a Chinese balloon. Blowing over this nation. Nobody knew it about it. Nobody did anything about it. For like a week. Two weeks. Whatever. I shot down over Myrtle Beach. And they saw it first thing. They had saw it in Montana. It flew over the border in Canada. But it also been over by Alaska. There was time to take it down. How much did our enemies spy on us? We had enemy spies. Whether mechanical or not. There was a spy. This is a physical version. People, there's moles and spies in the United States from China and Russia. Probably Russia. That nobody's discovered yet. They're spying on us. They're testing the fences. They're see, testing our defenses. And they're going to take our defenses out. They're going to attack. If we don't, God's the only thing that can keep them back. We got to keep praying. We got to, for Remember God. We got to turn back to God. We got to be humble ourselves. Like um, fourteen said, or Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, first fourteen says, "You're called by our name." So we think this is a nation, one nation under God. Apparently, no not shall humble themselves, and we're not humble enough. We're so prideful. Clearly, the pride parades, Pride Month, saying we're full of pride. We're full of ourselves. Doing the lust of the flesh, doing what we want, build it back better, you know, pridefully. So we don't humble ourselves. We don't get rid of all that, uh, get rid of pride, um, and pray. We get rid of all that and pray. Humble ourselves and pray, and seek His face, seek the will of God for our lives. Turn from our wicked ways, which means including homosexuality and the. Alphabet community, get rid of that. Turn from our wicked ways, and he, he will hear from heaven. He will hear our prayers and will forgive our sins. He will forgive everything we've done. Our slate will be wiped clean. We can make everything Christ, Jesus Christ, when we, we come, we become a new creation in Jesus Christ. All things be, Jesus says, He become, makes all things new. So we can become new, and He will heal our land. Make everything new, complete, perfect, whole, complete. He'll heal our land. And what? He does that. He proved, test us to prove us. 
uh, going back to Deuteronomy in chapter 9, verse 16, it says, To do thee good. He humbles us. He proves us. Tests us. Um, to do us good to a latter end. So make us better in the end. To make us new. Make an end of an old us and make a new us in his new covenant. To give us a hope. It gives us a hope in the future through Jesus Christ. Not through ourselves, but through Jesus Christ. We have a hope and a future. He is our blessed hope. Jesus is our only hope. We have to turn from our wicked ways. We have to remember where our nation came from. Came, we were established on Judeo-Christian values. On the word of God. You look in our constitution. There's probably a lot of the word of God in there. We're one nation. Why would we say one nation under God? Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. For in our Pledge of Allegiance. Indivisible. Can't be divided. Well, look where, where we're at right now. We're not physically divided. But we're spiritually divided. The only bringing that we can bring unity is in Jesus Christ. Common union in Christ. We need Jesus. The new covenant, which he talks about, establish his covenant. We need to establish our covenant in Jesus. We need Jesus in our nation. We need to remember Jesus. Where our hope comes from, where our help comes from. Jesus said he. The Lord was telling me in scripture that he's bringing the help. He's bringing the people. He's bringing the finances. If we don't forget him, we don't forget him. He's warning us. He was saying, beware those forget God. It says that he, well, not of ourselves get rid of pride. And we don't, we didn't bring our own prosperity. God did that. As a farmer, we know that. God brings our, our prosperity or brings abundant harvest. Brings abundance. So God is going to bring our prosperity as long as we humble ourselves. So I think we're going kind of through a wilderness moment. A hard time. So that way you may be humble. Now if it, if it takes further hum, humbleness, I'm, not, I'm, well, I'm praying for our, our, our nation now. But I'm definitely praying for our nation if it grows darker. We need to gather together. We need to get into fellowship. We need to reunite in the name of Jesus. Praying for our nation. Bringing him a remembrance. When he says, uh, for the communion, for the Holy Sacrament of communion, do this often as you drink it. And talking about the blood. The wine. Do this often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. In remembrance. Don't we just doing it as an act, a spiritual act, uh, a duty, or we're doing our relationship with him. Do you actually remember him? Do you remember where he's brought you from? You remember when you were humbled and tested and tried? Where you came from? We need to remember Jesus. We need to remember our, well, the foundations of not only of our nation, but our, but our roots as Christians, our foundations as Christians, Christ as our chief cornerstone. We need to remember. And with 2024 coming up, I don't know if it actually falls on the 5th or not. But we need to remember, remember, I have to look that up. But anyway, uh, give me a second. I'm going to look that up, what day that is. Okay. Uh, I can't tell. Maybe I'll tell them my calendar I got here. Uh, well, I think you run one day. October, November. No. 
What is fine? Oh, it won't be. Um, I think it's on second Tuesday. Well, anyway, let me look this up. My calendar won't tell me. That's so funny. Get this. Anybody, if anybody's familiar with V for Vendetta, the movie, never seen it. The character says, remember, remember the 5th of November. Get this. 5th of November, Tuesday, November 20, or November 5th, 2024 is election day. So I'm telling you, pray. See God and pray what his will is. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek God's face. Turn from your wicked ways. But I want to tell you, remember. Don't forget God. Remember, remember. On the 5th of November next year. To remember God. Remember God now. Humble yourself. Seek his, seek his face and pray. Turn from your wicked ways. And he will heal from heaven and heal our land. We've been praying. At least I, I know why I have. There have been many others. Seek his face. Seek his will is what it means. Seek his face. Seek his will. Pray. And turn from your wicked ways. We do that as a nation. Seek his face. Seek his will for this nation. Then he will heal our land. We will have prosperity again. He, He'll give us power to get wealth again. We'll prosper again. But that's the only way. If we don't, if we keep forgetting God, we get farther and further away, away from God. The way we have since 9-11, September, September 11, 2001, our, our nation was attacked. Now, there are conspiracies whether it's an inside job or some other country did it. Because there's dark powers in this nation that have a secret agenda that don't want to be known. And I'm telling you, you got spies, you got the, the enemy from within, you got the enemy, the enemy from within. That's, that's tactics. We got spies. Got enemies infiltrated in our nation the devil's of course infiltrated in our nation but we need to turn from our wicked ways seek his seek humble yourself pray seek his face seek his will of God turn from your wicked ways and he'll hear from heaven and heal our land remember where we came from as a nation even before 9-11 Pearl Harbor, we were attacked by our enemies. The technology is there to destroy our nation, to cripple our nation. Whether you believe it or not, most of our currency, most of our transactions are electric. Our enemies have an EMP capable weapons, an EMP causes EMF frequency and will can shut down the electrical grid. Even with a nuclear blast, it'll shut down the electrical grid. Nuclear blast will kill thousands to millions. People that probably don't know Jesus. So you want to think hell on earth on in that. But think of a literal hell for those who die that not knowing Jesus. So we need to bring, bring, remember Jesus, remember God, turn it back to, turn back to God, humble ourselves. So he's taking us through a little right now. It's not that bad. We can survive. We can, well, his, his obedient people can flourish. 
And he's going to do that. He's going to bring the people. He's going to bring the resources. But it's going to take his people, his obedient people, that he's going to send the people, send the finances, send the help to do the work of the ministry. But those who have been given power by God, even though they think they've done it in their own hand, he's going to take those people, even if they're an unbeliever, and give unto the kingdom. God wants to turn his kingdom. He wants it for his own purposes and glory. It has a purpose and destiny. We just need pray that he turns the hearts, turns people's hearts back to God or for the purposes of God. To stir up their hearts, to send help, send finances, send what they need for the work of the ministry for his purposes and glory. So turn back to God. Remember where our nation came from. Remember where, if you were born again, remember where you came from. Don't forget God, lest you perish like the other nations that, like other nations that were before Israel. Turn back to God, humble yourself, seek his face and pray. Bring back one nation under God in the name of Jesus. Amen.